<laughs> no problems, Elizabeth. This happens <laughs> too often actually, for us. Yeah, actually, we're just too to... excited to start the the events every yeah, time I, we do them. <laughs> actually, we want always to join this special room for the moderators, but somehow I I'm always clicking on the make it live, and then we are suddenly <laughs> live. But no problem at all. So we are live. We are live, yes, and we we can wait a few minutes more for will, others definitely. to join us, and then we can start. How sure. are you doing, Darko? I'm are you good. ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm I'm really excited about this topic because I really like to talk about uh, retail and to talk about customer loyalty, and then combine with with NFTs and Web three space. This is something very special for sure. This is definitely your cup of tea. It is, it is, and I, but not only that. I I feel like you know, like a passion related to that. So it's more than just a topic that I like. It's a real yeah. passion, and I see so many opportunities in that area. So that's Absolutely, why I yeah. love it. There are so many opportunities because the topic is very new. It's still very unexplored, and right. there's just this vast world of what can, what we can do with uh, right. NFTs right and web3 space in general and we will talk about that a bit um later on you know i see it also as a kind of mission i i mean our mission uh, to explain to people that there are the nfts are not just the jpeg pictures which are sometimes crazy expensive to explain them that there is much more behind yeah. that there is a real power which you can use to create real benefits and to make real business at the end so that's Absolutely. the mission that we have absolutely <laughs> you can yeah you, you can drink a little bit of water before we start it's pretty that hot was, here in serbia yeah, and i know you told me in germany it's very very hot as well yes i have in the background a uh, ventilator i think is the english word so i hope the sound is not damaged by that can you hear no, it in the background i, I can't okay? hear it it's, okay, it's fine it's like an air condition for I don't know for for people that didn't have enough money to buy the real air condition. So I have I don't have air condition. <laughs> Fake <Absolutely>. air condition. <laughs> okay, so we're getting closer to starting the webinar. Claudio, nice to meet you. Claudio, Claudio is our regular guest, I guess, I think. It's good, so. Claudio, are you from Italy? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Buongiorno. <laughs> are you speaking Italian? Yes, because I studied in Italy and I had to learn it. Really? <laughs> I had Italian roommates who didn't speak any English, so I was forced to learn Italian. Hey, I didn't know that. Great. Yeah. How many languages are you speaking? Italian, English, Serbian? English, a little bit of French. Wow. A Spanish, I can understand pretty much everything. Wow. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> I tried, I tried learning German as well, but it was very, very hard. <laughs> no, it's, it sounds hard, but it's not that hard. Claudio, tell me please, in which city in Italy are you based? Ah, near, near Venice. Io studiato mm, in Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I lived in Venice, actually. Oh, very good. Qualicità, Claudio. You know, I was very surprised. I was several times there. You know, we are client of, of, of course we know. Yes, yes. <laughs> sure. And I, I hope you are satisfied with us and our services and our products and our people. 90%. Oh, come I on. Think. Come on, why not 100%? <laughs> I understand that. It's okay. Hi, Sean. Hello. Good morning. I guess you you come from the US since you wrote good morning. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Nice to see you. Tell me, please, is it Sean or sh or Seen? I'm not sure which pronunciation is right. Oh, UK. He's from the UK. Yes. Daryl, good is afternoon. It, is it Sean or Seen? Sean? If Sean, Sean. just type in yes, yeah. Sean. <laughs> or just yes. Is it Sean? I love this. I love when we are Sean. starting an okay, event. Okay, great. Thank with you. Uh, with comments from you guys. Okay, that so, is not very interested to see who is <laughs> listening to us today. Maybe we should open the, 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 the list so that everybody can see who is inside. So if people want to communicate with each other, they can do that because there is a private chat uh, in this tool as well. So Anna, do you know how to do that? To be honest, I'm not sure how to do I will that. try. There is a somewhere sure. an option to do that. So if you can. If not, it doesn't matter. It's no problem. Mm, I don't see it, but I will. Once you start speaking, I will try to okay. figure out how to do it. Okay. Okay. Try, try to do that. Unless, if you don't know, ask Militza. She knows, so she doesn't okay. say. Well, so I'm <laughs> just send her a message. This would be will. good because then maybe people want to to discuss uh, uh, privately something. Okay, guys, shall we start? Let's start. Oh, shall we wait a couple of more My minutes? turn. What do you think? <laughs> starting or waiting? I'm starting the webinar right now. Go. Okay. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. It's, as I said, it's very nice to see you. And it's very nice to have engagement right from the start uh, to see you comment and uh, to see, you know, react to our questions. Uh, I'm very happy about that. And I just want to wish you welcome to another webinar by Fiscal Solutions. Uh, I have to, I'm going to hit you right away with some numbers and uh, tell you that actually this is our 234th webinar. Okay. It's quite impressive, right? Um, and first, you know, I'm going to give you a few words about myself and Darko. And because um, I'm a lady, I'm going to start with myself first. <laughs> <laughs> good way. That's good. I okay, agree. so my name is Anna Boschnik. Um, I don't know if some of you already know me, but I have held uh, quite a few webinars here um, for Fiscal Solutions. And I'm marketing assistant at Fiscal Solutions. Um, I'm very passionate about digital marketing. I love innovation. I love research. Uh, so you can probably see how fiscalization and marketing and Web3 are actually a perfect combination for me. And I'm very excited to be able to take part in the Web3 space as I am also part of the Ape School team. Okay, so enough about me. Uh, um, you're going to hear from Darko uh, today as well. He has, uh, you can see him... <laughs> on your screen and he has years of experience in the retail industry and he has been active in the web3 world from the start and um, he already told you at the beginning of his this webinar it's a great passion of his um, he is both ceo of fiscal solutions and the founder of ape school now i won't say anything else i will just let him introduce himself to you on his own later on um, as for the company, uh, Fiscal Solutions, we have been in the industry for 20 years and uh, actually our company will turn 20 next year. Uh, our focus is always on retail, on points of sale, that is stores and in general on fiscalization. We're active in 22 countries um, and we have clients across Europe. You can see uh, some of them on this slide. Uh, you know, these are IKEA, Metro, Taco, Decathlon, uh, etc. Um, okay, I have to, <laughs> I have to brag a little bit. Uh, so I must add that we are also innovators. Uh, in that sense, we have uh, developed the first fiscal middle middleware in the world, 
uh, we have set up a first online portal with information on fiscal topics, and we are the first fiscal company with crypto focus. Uh, you have probably noticed that we are treating metaverse as any other country, and really we just expect this topic to grow and grow on importance even more in the future. And for this reason, uh, we have started the Ape School project, which is something an entire team of seven people is dedicated to, as we try hard to educate ourselves and uh, take part in this digital world and not just observe it. Uh, we have uh, Ape School is actually, you know, it's an educational NFT project, and um, so far we have had more than uh, one thousand registered participants. So, uh, to sum up, uh, we understand retail, we understand technology, and we understand Web three. Uh, we are part of it, as I mentioned before. And uh, today, we want to give you our view on how NFTs can uh, help retailers to create very innovative customer loyalty strategies you will see that NFTs can be used for a real purpose and that they can be a great part of your strategy. So uh, why are we talking about this? Uh, to clarify a little bit more, um, you have probably noticed that NFTs and metaverse are everywhere or you wouldn't be here. So you probably understand that the utility of NFTs can be and will be huge. Uh, and since it's something that has only just taken off the possibility the possibilities are endless and it's something that we have been studying through uh, our own actions within uh, web3 world and by observing what others are doing uh, so what's obvious about using nfts as customer loyalty strategy is uh, that um, it makes the customer feel special it develops community uh, exclusivity and i think that's something that every customer wants or uh, would want and we will talk about it later on okay so now that i told you something about myself uh, and what we do at our company uh, i think that we can finally move on to the real deal and to talk about what we actually came here for so uh darko you can take the stage now it's all yours and i'll thank see you, you later thank you Thank you very much, Anna, for the great introduction about the company and about the topic of this, this, this webinar. Uh, I promise to you that you will hear today a different perspective because everybody is communicating perspectives which are very similar to each other. I want to give you today a different perspective as we see the NFTs as a vehicle, as a tool to create something new, to create some new experiences in the area of customer loyalty. I will use myself in one case as an example, and this case will be Wrangler, and you will see later why, uh, because I think they are following very special strategy, and I was trapped, <laughs> let's call it like that, in the trap of, of uh, let's say, the smart trap of Wrangler to become a very loyal customer. And I will show you my way over there and my, why I uh, decided or why I made some of the decisions, and then everything will be clear. But we go, before we go in that deep details, uh, let me introduce you myself first. I am living in Germany. I studied in Germany. I'm engineer, actually. I programmed a lot in the beginning of my career, uh, but then I moved more to the sales department, project management department. At, and the, at the end, before I opened my own company, I was leading software development <clears throat> department in a large company which is dedicated to the retail. Uh, I am since almost 25 years in the retail IT. I don't know nothing else. I was working always just in the retail IT. That's only what I know. Uh, today, I'm CEO of the cust uh, company called Fiscal Solution. Uh, somebody uh, or some people at, the, at our company called me C. Uh, VO means uh, Chief Vision Officer. It's also true because I love the visions, I love the future, I love the strategies and the business models related to that. I think I'm totally depend, uh, addicted to the social networks. I think I'm using all the social networks which are existing. I think they are good. I think they are creating the evolution of the, of the society. But of course, you need a balance, you need other things as well. But I think they are good. 
And I think Web3 space is natural development and evolution of all those uh, 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 all those social networks and social environment that we have today. Uh, I'm completely doxed. And now I have to ask, do you know what does it mean to be doxed? Uh, because I know that not all of you are in the Web3 space, and this is very typical wording in the Web3 space. And I will explain it, of course. Doxed means that I'm very transparent and uh, every or most of the information are well known about me. So I'm not anonymous. Uh, this would be the other, the, the other, uh, 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 other side. You are either doxed or anonymous. In the Web3 space, you can run the project totally anonymous without that somebody knows your real identity. This is very important. Uh, I'm already now starting to give you some points about the Web3 space, because if you want to talk about NFTs, you have to understand first the Web3 space. One of those uh, points was just that the projects can be run even if you are not, uh, uh, if your identity is not known. The second very important point is the usage of the social networks. I told you I'm addicted of the social networks, but not just like that. So I really love them. But in the Web3 space, they are heavily used. And one of the most important networks is Twitter. You see on this slide my account on the Twitter. It's called Professor Keating. And this is next important point for the customer loyalty as well. I'm using this ident identity, the second identity, as my Web3 space identity. So this means I'm using NFT, and you see over there Mutant Ape as NFT, uh, as a new identity of myself. So actually, I have two identities. I'm Darko Pavic, CEO of the company, and I'm a Mutant Ape, this one, called Professor Keating. And this is first an important topic if we are talking about the customer loyalty and NFTs the ident identity and the identification with NFTs. But I will come back to this point later if I explain you the, the, the complete environment. You should just know that I'm known in, in internet as Professor Keating, as I like teaching, and I'm doing that in the Ape, Ape School. And as uh, Anna just mentioned, we had already more than 1,000 participants registered to our uh, uh, lessons. But before we go into the details, let me ask you something. What do you think? Is the other NFTs actually revolution from the technological point of view and business point of view? Or do you see just crazy hype? To help you a little bit, uh, I will show you several facts and several, let's say, examples. But just type in first, hype or revolution? What do you think? NFTs are hype or revolution? During your typing, revolution. Nice to see. I didn't expect anything else from you, Sean, so that's great. Uh, yes, but some, some people might think that it's maybe crazy hype, and I will show you why those people are thinking that. Look at this. This is a small picture. Actually, it's an icon, 24 by 24. It's a crypt, crypto punk uh, NFT, one of the first NFTs in the world, created 2017. And several days ago, somebody uh, bought one of them for $3.3 million. $3.3 million. So if you see that, uh, and if you think about that, many people would think this is totally crazy hype. Why is this guy doing that? Where is the real value of that? To help you to understand the value, and to help you to see the revolution behind this small picture, I want to give you two or three business cases where the NFTs are used, uh, just to understand that it's not actually the JPEG with what you are buying. Let me introduce you this guy. So this is the new Alfa Romeo. It's called Tonale. It's a new model just now uh, produced, and you can buy it, I think, even now, or at least order it. Uh, it's the first car in the world which is producing NFTs. Can you imagine that? So the NFTs can be produced by the machine, it's by the computer itself, without any human interaction, and you don't need even JPEGs for that. This car is producing after I don't know how many kilometers, probably several thousand, uh, NFT, and this NFT is containing the data which are important for this car, like uh, uh, engine status, like uh, temperatures, like uh, tire status, like mileage, and so on. And now imagine if you create NFT out of all those data, 
This NFT is immutable, it's secure, it's stored forever on the blockchain and so on. And this can be really uh, used to create real benefits. Imagine the service station. Uh, if you drive with this car to the service station, the guy who is working there will be able to see the history of the car with all details, just like that. And he will be able to analyze the car and to help you if needed. Or if you want to sell this car, uh, nobody needs to trust you what is the mileage of the car. You just check the blockchain and you see the mileage is like that and you can easily sell it. So there are huge benefits which are created just by using the technology which is behind uh, NFTs. Let's move a little bit in another direction and I'm, I'm sure you will not expect this as well. And this is a very interesting example. One of the major topics in the NFT world and Web3 space is the ownership of the data. Ownership of the data is actually, many of you might think it's nothing special. You own the data, like you are owning, I don't know, watch or car or whatever. But if you own something, you can sell it. And if you can sell it, you can really use it. You can create business benefits. This is an example of the company which is specialized in the medicine area. Uh, they are helping you to collect your data, which are related to your health. To your status of your body and your soul and you can let's say collect this data and publish those data as nft on the marketplace produced by that company you can offer that nft to the companies like i don't know universities research institutions pharmaceutical industry and so on to buy your data because they will really need those those things in order to continue research and so on so this means uh, if we compare this situation with situation today, today you are giving your data anyhow to the centralized companies, which are doing something with the data, and you even don't know that. But tomorrow, and if you are talking about NFTs, you are owning the data, and the smart companies can create really smart concepts to engage you, to create the data, and to sell the data. And now imagine if we are talking just about this kind of creation of the, of the data, which engagement of the of the users is there so you have to to work to do something in order to create those data maybe coming back to the car industry there is another example which i just forgot to to, to mention mercedes-benz i'm sure you know them they're just running a pilot with 500 drivers driving the new model of the mercedes-benz on the certain way if they ride, uh, dr drive that car on a certain way, and this is ecological way, let's say, not faster than, and you know, all these kind of things, they are earning cryptocurrency, which was created and issues by, issued by Mercedes-Benz, their own cryptocurrency. And you can exchange then that uh, cryptocurrency from Mercedes-Benz to the real one, and at the end, in the dollars or euros. So this means by driving the car on a certain way, you can earn cryptocurrency perfect customer loyalty. So I am now checking if I can buy that car because with time I'm earning some money. And even if this is not that big money, it's a nice, it's a nice reward. So this means just by those two, three examples, the business cases are really interesting. And you see already now that the customer loyalty approach is totally changing. The engagement and everything what is behind can be created on totally different way by using the NFT concept. And now let me give you another example, which is showing how the business in uh, Web3 space is created today, because this way how the business is created is different than it was yesterday. In Web2 space, the typical way, and that was the way that I run as well, to create business is like that. First, you have a business model, of course, then you try to implement it. If you are successful, you will create the customers because they will buy your products and then you will be happy and you will, be try, you will try to create loyal customer and to sell them more. This is typical process. Business model, sell, create more loyalty and sell more. In Web3 space, it's different. It's a first create the customer, loyal customer, and then sell them. And this is totally different. And now just one example. There is a brewery called Meta Bro uh, Society. It's a German brewery. I think they are located in Munich. They will just in a couple of weeks, I hope, uh, publish the NFTs. And if you own that NFT, you will be able to enjoy free beer 
during complete year and the quantity of, of the beer that you will get will be depending on the uh, rarity of the NFT. Additionally, there will be several other uh, utilities that you will enjoy, like VIP tours of the brewery, of course, uh, like exclusive discounts and so on. So let's think about this business model. What is the business model behind? They will not make money by giving the beer free, of course not but they will create the loyal customers even on the beginning, even before they have even products or who knows what. So the process is create the local loyal customers and then sell to those loyal customers, whatever you like. And if you compare now this, what I just told you with the business models of the companies like Yuga Labs and Yuga Labs is the company which produced and published the most famous NFTs today, Bored Ape, uh, Yacht Club and Mutant Apes. What, what was done by those guys? They created first the community. So they published the NFTs. The NFTs uh, uh, were, let's say, enjoyed by the people. And by enjoying those NFTs, the community was created. And then they published merch. And I never saw that one retailer, and Yuga Labs is actually a retailer, sold so many merch. I saw just the people in the community which were buying T-shirts for... $1,500 or $2,000 or whatever. And then they are making joke. I have enough t-shirts for my complete neighborhood. <laughs> so, and that's true. And I was by myself, the guy who was buying, I don't know, 20 hoodies. I don't need 20 hoodies for what? But you know, this is the, this is the feeling of belonging to something, feeling of being part of community. I want to be special. And this is what you have if you have community and then you are selling. So you see the way J is changing. It's not like it was yesterday. The business is changing. And now the question is, do you still believe that the guy who bought this NFT was crazy or not? I don't think. I think there is a real revolution which is just going on. And I think as well that there is a hype. But there is no better moment to earn money than having the hype and having the revolution. So it's a perfect combination. So whoever starts now to do something, he has a great opportunities to make the business, especially if you are retailer. And somehow all the businesses are related to retailing. It's just a question what you are selling at that moment. Before we go into the concepts of the customer loyalty more deep, let me just give for the people which are new in the space, which don't understand maybe the blockchain technology, more details about the technology itself. So first, let's discuss a little bit what is the basic, what are the basics of the NFT technology? The, this is that, that's definitely blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. So I will give you now just a few very simple definitions of the blockchain and cryptocurrencies so that we are able to continue and to discuss more details. The blockchain technology is nothing else than a simple Excel table. There is nothing more. It's actually just one simple table with several rules how to use it and uh, organized on a special way. So first important rule is the data cannot be changed. You can just add the data. Very important. Second, each line in that uh, Excel table is related on a special way with the line before. By that, it's a very secure. There is a huge integrity because you cannot change one of the lines uh, and not destroy, let's say, this order. Every system would immediately see that because the relation would be, would be wrong. Uh, there are heavily uh, uh, or, let's say, very strong uh, hashing functions which are used to secure data. This is very important. So this means nobody can hack it by technology, by algorithm. The functions which are used cannot be decoded. There are not that many functions in the world which are like that, but there are some of them and they are used in the, in the blockchain. And it's a direct communication between the computers uh, which are in the network. So this means we don't need any kind of the company or whomever to create transactions between us. And this is great. This is called peer-to-peer, -peer, P2P. And everything is transparent. And this is definitely helping uh, the philosophy of the blockchain that everybody can see what is going on in the blockchain. Uh, okay, understand you. I'm sure that you understand now what is the blockchain. There is nothing more, actually, which you should understand. The basics are enough. The second point is the cryptocurrency. What is actually the cryptocurrency? I'm sorry to say, to say that and to tell you, Cryptocurrency is actually nothing. 
And it's really like that. It's nothing. It's just an, one entry in that table that we just discussed before. But if we, all of us, agree that that entry in that table has a certain value, then it has certain value. Uh, it's like with the money. The money has only that's why value. So 10 euro has only value of 10 euro because somebody is telling you that it has 10 euro and because we all of us ac accepting that, that it has 10 euro. Apecoin. Apecoin has the value, I think, $5 or something like that in the moment, only because we accept that it has. So the cryptocurrency is just a uh, value that we agree that it has value. That's it. I'm sure you understand that as well. There are two cryptocurrencies which are most important for you to understand. One is Bitcoin, because it's the mother of all cryptocurrencies. And there is Ether, which is cryptocurrency of the uh, network called Ethereum. Why I'm mentioning Ether? because uh, most of the NFTs are based on the uh, Ethereum network. So far, so good. No need to understand much more. Just take it like it is in the moment. Let's discuss a little bit what are the NFTs, because some of you, I'm sure, are not that familiar with NFTs. Actually, it's not that uh, uh, difficult to explain. So NFTs are tokens. This is one token. I'm sure you know what is the token. Or even better example, this is the poker token. If you're playing poker, this is one of the tokens. So the NFTs are non-fungible tokens. This means you have two tokens. You cannot exchange them, even if they have a different, the same value. Uh, it's If this is 10 euro and this one is 10 euro, they are still not the same token. The fungible would be if you have two tokens which are the same, both of them are 10 euro, and it doesn't matter how you exchange them, they're always 10 euro. That's it, nothing else. Uh, but if we take now the technology, let's say, and NFTs, as we are talking about them in the Web3 space, there are some additional points which are very important. First, the NFTs are representing digital ownership, and this is now very important. So for the first time in the human history, we are able to create ownership of the assets which are actually not existing. And if I'm talking about X assets which are not existing, I'm talking about digital assets and abstract assets. These guys are not really existing. They are somewhere zeros and, and ones in some of the computers. Okay, for the first time we can do that. So this means the NFTs are non-fungible tokens which represent digital ownership of a physical houses, cars, and so on, or digital or even abstract assets. Important to understand. But if we translate that in the technology, the, the, the NFTs is actually just piece of software. So what you see here, it's a picture. It's a representation of the NFT. Uh, what you see here is NFT without representation. It's a set of the data. What you see here is set of the data plus uh, intelligence plus representation. So the NFT itself uh, is NFT itself is piece of software which has a, some kind of link to something which is representing it or with what, what you own and what you confirm, certificate that you own. That's it. But the real power of the NFTs is hidden in the intelligent, in the smart contract of the NFT. And I will explain you later what does it mean and it will be very clear to understand. Let me do a small summer, uh, summary before we continue to the customer loyalty topics. So for the first time in the human history, we are able to label. And now for the retailer among you, I'm using the labeling uh, word because I know that you know what it means to label something. And this is nothing else than NFT. Uh, for the first time, we are able to label digital and abstract assets. By that, the NFTs are new barcodes. But even more, these barcodes are intelligent because they have a smart contract. So this means if you remember the products, I don't have it now, almost all products have some kind of barcodes. And if the barcode was introduced in the, as the barcode was introduced in the retail industry, it was a real revolution. Now we have again the barcodes, they are coming again, but these barcodes are smart. These barcodes are intelligent and these barcodes are NFTs. And this is the big revolution which is happening in the retail. Now let's combine this little bit and let's move towards customer loyalty a little bit more. So what does it, what does make, what, what, why are the NFTs, let's say, so special for the retail and why NFTs can be used that good in retail? You have actually three areas which are 
unbelievable great for the retailers. First, the ownership. What does it mean, the ownership? I sh showed you this example. Ownership means that you are able to sell something. This means for the retailer, now suddenly you are, uh, because you can own data and abstract assets, suddenly retailer is able to expand the product portfolio to include the new products and to sell them because of the data ownership and because of the ownership of those abstract and digital assets. Great for the retailer. Smart contract is the second point. Smart contract means that I'm suddenly able to combine different ownerships, let's say, and to create different business models natively, uh, automatically, without any kind of involvement of any kind of people or whatever systems. This is really, really great. And at the end, I have the representation, which is always, or at least in many cases, creating real added value for this kind of, of, of business models. And the representation can be not just a picture, it can be also, uh, I don't know, dance moves or music or video or something totally, totally different, something else. So this means ownership plus smart contract plus representation is creating totally new business models and usage use cases for the retail. Let's discuss some of them just to see how those things can be used. I'm totally sure that optimization of existing processes is something what you are always already thinking about. Imagine the food retailer and traceability of the supply chain. If the delivery of the food will be like that, that you create the NFTs on all stations with all data, like those cars that I showed you before. Imagine you are delivering meat, for example, and on one station you deliver the, and create the NFT with the temperature and the status of the meat. Then you move with your uh, delivery boy, delivery guy to the next station, create another NFT with all the data, and then you move to the, I don't know, trading company and so on. And by checking the history of that meat, you will have a totally, total traceability without any change, uh, any possibility to change it or to hack it. So you see a great, uh, great topic for the retailers. Uh, extending the product portfolio is another big thing that I just explained to you. Uh, just think about 3D uh, variable in the metaverse. Just think about uh, 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 NFTs as, it, as, it, as a product that you can sell and so on and so on. This means the retailer can add totally new product portfolios to existing, uh, to existing one. Uh, you can create totally new business models. And now I can give you an ex interesting example. In Germany, the food retailer called Kaufland opened a store in the metaverse, <clears throat> sorry, in Roblox, creating the game, let's say, for the younger audience. Uh, by that, they are creating, let's say, loyal customer even before they are selling something. So it's, it's a customer loyalty tool, which is ending in the business model. But even more, the play to earn games are typical and let's say the most uh, web3 space uh, concept uh, and as a retailer lots of retailers are going in that direction because this is the way how you can engage and even reward your customers if you are talking about the social activities there are so many interesting things and again one example i love to give you examples kafur i'm sure you know them it's a very big one of the biggest in the world retailers food retailers uh, they are selling in the sandbox NFTs called NFBs, like, you know, the bees, <laughs> insects. And everything what they earn with, with the, the, that sales, they are donating to the charity organization, which is dedicated to protect the life and the environment of the bees. Very interesting social project uh, based on the NFTs and based on the metaverse sandbox. I like that. And at the end, we are talking about totally new customer loyalty concept, which now can be created. Actually, we touched a little bit all of those possible new concepts, but I want to go a little bit more in detail now. And before we do that, I want to give you the levels of the customer loyalty as we understand it. Just five seconds ago, I got the cards, let's say loyalty cards, and these are the cards from my wife. There are five of them. Can you imagine that? Six, even six. And this level of customer loyalty, we are calling in our comp company discount customer loyalty. Why discount? Because it's very simple. It's just a fast selling uh, concept. It's like uh, sell, 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 sell. 
but translate it into customer loyalty world. This means you buy, 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 buy. You earn, 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 earn something, points, whatever. And then you get something. Discount, 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 product, product, product. So this is okay, and this is great, and lots of people, and including me, are using that. For example, this is from the food retail, Aneto, and it's very nice. It's okay. It's almost discount, I think. It's okay. It's good. In order to, to, to implement that, you just need to identify the customer who has this card, by the way, with a barcode. Uh, it's a not big technology behind, and it's easy to implement. But on the other side, you don't have any kind of deep relationship with the gas customer, with the guy who has this card, and even more, I have this card, but I'm not sure if Anna has this card. We never discussed about that. And if you are uh, honest, you will also do not know if somebody has the card that you have, unless it's your friend or your family. So this means this card, this kind of customer loyalty systems are not really, I don't know, not really creating the community and not getting the people together, not transforming, trans, transporting any values. There is nothing behind. It's just sell, 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 get discount. That's it. Okay, not bad, but it's level one. Level two that we see as a level two, at least, are so-called community members. I think these are the customer loyalty concepts where the people feel a little bit more special, where they feel like belonging to something, like we are a certain group with a certain philosophy that we follow, with a certain strategy, and this is definitely much better. I know the guys which are in my community, we are communicating, and we are proud to be part of that. This is really good. Uh, this is com now, if you compare it with NFT world, I'm sure that you will know this kind of community feeling from the NFT space. Uh, in order to implement this kind of customer loyalty concepts, you will need two things. You will need identification technology to identify somehow the people which are part of that community. And you will need a tool and strategies to create the community feeling. Uh, and now let's, I will come back to this implementation in the next slide. But before we do that, let's go to the highest level of the customer loyalty as I see. The, the highest level we call ambassadors. The ambassadors are people which are actually selling the selling now under the brackets, the the products of the customer uh, without even ask paid being paid for that or being asked for that. They are doing it because they want that. They are doing it because they really believe that they have a mission that it makes sense to do that. This is totally different level. Uh, to, to be able to implement this kind of customer loyalty, you will need, of course, identification technology, for sure. You will need the tools to create a community, because before you have ambassadors, you need the feeling of the community. And you will need the tools to create a mission. And this is even higher than just the creating the community. You have to create the uh, thoughts of the common mission. So let's identify three major, let's say, areas of the technologies and the tools and the strategies that you will need as a retailer. First, identification technology. Second, community technology, creation of the community. And the third, the creation of the mission. If we translate that now one-to-one -one in the technology, which is today able to implement that. So this means if you're going to the companies like we are, and asking them, hey, guys, I want to implement customer loyalty. Can you offer me the solution for the identification of my customer? On the right side, you will see always the technologies which are implementing that. For example, for the identification, you can use this kind of cards. You have to read the barcode with your scanner, and you will be able to identify your customer. Near field communication is something which is, of course, well known from our phones. It's used. It's perfect to identify the customer. Barcodes by itself, it doesn't, it has, it, it can be on printed on whatever, not just on the cards. There is a technology behind, behind that. It can be QR barcode or whatever. So barcodes is an, uh, one of the areas. RFID is definitely one of the areas. But one of the technologies is also NFTs. NFTs are piece of codes, as I just teached you, learned you as a teacher, as a professor Keating. And those guys, NFTs, are used to identify the owner of the, of the NFT. So it's actually identification technology. If we now discuss the, the, the topics related to the creation of community, the social networks are perfect to create a community. Those tools are, I think, even the most important. 
the tools like Discord, the tools like Twitter and so on, but even traditional channels as well, they are important and without them, you cannot create the community. And again, there, there are NFTs because they are, they are using all these tools as well and they are implementing those tools as well. If we are talking about ambassadors and creation of the mission, we are talking about actually about the same tools, social networks, community networks and so on but used a little bit different from the strategical point of, of, of view. I think the content that you are pushing in those network channels, in those channels, is a little bit different. And we will touch this on the example of Wrangler and me in a couple of seconds. But before that, let's make a conclusion. Only one technology is able to implement all three areas, means identification, creation of community, and creation of mission. And these technologies or technology is or are NFTs. There is no other technology. All other technologies are just in that one area. Social networks you can use just for one area. Uh, NFC you can use just for one area. Just one technology is going all over those needed uh, areas of implementation. If we put it a little bit on a different way, NFTs are great tool to create identities not just to identify yourself with, with something, but also to identify you. So both of those things. Uh, they are great topic to, to utilize the social networks. NFT pro there is no NFT project without Twitter, for example. And there is no way to sell any of NFTs without Twitter. So natively, those guys are, uh, let's say, very tight and very uh, 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 close together. Same with the Discord. And there is a no NFT project, really good one, really big one without Discord. You need it, unless we are talking about free means, goblins, and so on. But this is something else. I'm talking about business solutions and business uh, cases. Smart contract te technology is, of course, the, the last part, which is uh, making the NFTs uh, great to implement these three uh, technologies. So guys, from other side, from other point of view, if you want to implement the highest level of the in uh, customer loyalty, I mean, to, uh, talking about ambassadors, you will not have other chance in the moment. This is the only technology that you have. So, so either you take it or you, are, or you will have uh, lots of different technologies that you have to combine with each other, and this will be much more difficult. Okay, so let me tell you something uh, which I think was a shock for me. Many retailers already recognize that. We are the retailers that we are talking today about are not the first one and the examples that I gave to, to you. There are lots of retailers which already started the project. And in preparation of this, of this uh, webinar, I created a timeline. I wanted to put the retailers uh, by months, let's say each month by month, uh, as they started the NFT projects. So just to see the picture, if the number of the retailers is growing, and just to see the picture, let's say, how many of those guys are already in the space. And now I will show you the result. And, for me, it was really surprising. Ta-da! Unbelievable, unbelievable. First, the number of the retailers, it's really huge. I didn't know that. I thought there are just a couple of them, but there are not. There are lots of retailers. First point. Second point, it's not just limited to the fashion retailing. We have here examples, food retailing, hospitality, pharmacy. So across the retail industries, it's not just fashion, and they are not just retailers which are selling nice 3D wearables for the metaverse. Look at that. Kaufland is a supermarket, a food chain, actually. Kafur, food supermarket. CVS is pharmacy from US. Starbucks, hospitality. McDonald's, hospitality, and so on. Interesting. Another interesting fact which I saw uh, after creating this picture is that the number of the retailers in the last months, I mean May and June, is growing rapidly so it's really like that and the number of the retailers which are just preparing something is really growing as well but on the other side i analyzed all of those uh, concepts as well and i have to say that unfortunately all of them are on the level two level two remember the level one was discounter level two was the community approach and the level three was ambassador approach okay one retailer is missing in this picture, and this is Wrangler. And I didn't put Wrangler in this picture because it's a only retailer, as I understood, which is actually running the approach of ambassador. 
and not running approach of community creator in the first stage. And this is something which is making that concept very special. And I would like to create now a sort of short story and to tell you a short story how I become Wrangler's ambassador or maybe something like that, if this is ambassador. So at the end, you can tell me if I'm ambassador or not. But first, I will tell you the story. So let me give you a background about Wrangler. As I, it's, everything is from my point of view. Maybe some facts are wrong, but actually it's my experience. So everything started in March, I think, this year, as Wrangler published an uh, NFT collection called Mr. Wrangler. It was created together with a guy called Leon Bridges, which is a musician, famous musician from the US. Uh, and uh, the, the collection was created as a celebration of the 75th uh, birthday of Wrangler. Nice. To be honest, I don't know who is Leon Bridges. Not at all. So I saw this strategy of Wrangler even in March. I think it was March. And I was thinking, shall I mint it or not? Then I uh, try to analyze which utilities are related to this NFT. And it was fine. The utilities are really okay. So there is a nice uh, animated NFT. There is uh, access to the very special kind of event in New York. There is a jacket that you can get signed by the guy called Leon Bridges and so on. The utilities are nice, but I don't know who is Leon Bridges. <laughs> so in this case, the value of the utilities were not that important for me. Nice to have, but not that important. Then and I analyzed this guy. I heard a little bit music of, of, of Leon Bridges, and I didn't really relate to that music. So it's not my taste. It's not bad music, but it's not really. My, it's nice, but you know, I'm more going direction ACDC and <laughs> this kind of rock. But, but it's okay. So I decided not to mean. And I stick with that till June uh, this year. Uh, in June, I was visiting NF, uh, NFT.NYC. Uh, it's a big uh, uh, fair or trade show, or call it however, conference or whatever in New York related to NFTs. And at that conference, I met Sean. After his presentation, we had a small chat. And during this small chat, I think I understood the strategy behind. I understood the strategy which is related to the creation of the ambassadors. And I decided based on that small chat, which was maybe five minutes or maybe a little bit longer, I'm not sure, a couple of minutes, I decided to try. I decided to buy the NFT of the Wrangler and to see if this is really like that. Is it really the ambassador strategy or not? Or is it really following the same strategy like all others? Maybe I'm wrong. So I bought one of those NFTs and I just I was just waiting to see what will happen. Some weeks later, so even not that long later, uh, Sean, who is the chief of that project, who is managing the project, created the community on Twitter. And this was the first point where I thought, OK, this is nice. But why it was nice? Of course, using the Twitter is not that special. Everybody's using Twitter in that space, sure. But it was nice to find me, and this is this Professor Keating over there, my second identity, among all those guys. So there are some people which are very famous in the in the in this Web3 space. Some people are really, I don't know, really nice guys which are following the same philosophy as I do. And uh, it's nice to be with those guys. Even if you, if you check some of those people, they are really active in the community. They are communicating a lot. And I like to be in, in the community with those guys together. And it was a small community. So at that moment, I felt already special. But I didn't think it's a really ambassador strategy. It was OK. It was nice, but still nothing that big and that different. Then there was this message coming from Sean. Welcome to the Mr. Wrangler Holders community. I thought, thought, okay, nice, thank you very much. But I didn't think anything still. Then Sean started communicating a little bit more. Together with the LTD.enc, our ambition is to learn and grow in an authentic way by opening up a direct line with you all, our Genesis holders. This was the small, you know, like a small thought which I had in my head. Okay, direct connection. This is not bad, but maybe it's a just still marketing, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, there are lots of companies which are just, you know, doing lots of marketing and maybe this is the same. Okay, everybody is doing that, fine. So I didn't think it's a something special yet. 
but then this message uh, happened and this changed my my thought and this is where i think i recognize something different and just based on two words working and learning for the first time there is a this is the first retailer who wants to work with me as a customer and who wants to learn from me as a customer usually it's other way around usually the brands are pushing the information to me look how great this jacket is look my strategy look my expansion strategies look how great i am and this time they are asking me hey i want to work with you i am not that famous guy i am not the big guru you know in retail and nevertheless wrangler and means sean wants to talk to, to me wants to work with me wants to learn from me okay this was already very very good but i still was not that convinced maybe it's still marketing okay so because it's not typical you know it's, and that's why you are suspicious maybe it's really not true and this message changed it. somebody asked me hey do you have a time and this is by the way the platform that is publishing the nfts of, of wrangler they're doing it together as, as a partnership they ask me, hey, tell me, which time is the best for you to talk to you? They think seriously. It's not just a game. It's not just kidding. They really want to communicate with me and they are really expecting some inputs from me. Nice. I never saw that retailers are doing that. Usually they are creating customer loyalty channels to be able to push the advertisement to the customers, to push the information and to sell more. Fine with that, but this is different aspect, different uh, business concept. This is the strategy to listen and much higher customer loyalty is created if you listen. If you talk, you are not creating customer loyalty. You are just trying to push your information. Customer loyalty is created by the listening. For me, I understood that these guys understand what does it mean to create the community. And now the communication started and everything what was coming now was just confirming that I'm right and that I understood the strategy and that these guys understand what they're doing and that they are really creating the ambassador strategy. So the next point was we want to create relationship between you, dear customer, and core team. Great. And I trusted them because of the facts which happened before. And then even more, they wanted to treat the customer, the loyal customer means those guys which are part of that small community as a part of own team, they want to provide their own, or all the tools which they're using to onboard own people to us as well. Nobody's forcing them to do that. They are not under the pressure to, they, they don't have to do that. They want to do that. And this is a big difference. And I really love that. So I thought the big and great brand like Wrangler wants to treat me, small guy from the Hamburg in Germany, somewhere in the world, like a part of their own team unbelievable nice really really nice and again they want to listen to me perfect so just read those messages and i think no need for explanations <laughs> so it's it's even more powerful if you read by yourself all those details and then we had an ending message of this that thread please don't feel somehow bad because of the wording it's not bad because in the web space web3 space we are very relaxed let's call it like that so that's why this wording is even very good for that space and i will now tell you in the next slide why i think it's good based on all that i had this following feeling in my head as i was analyzing and following all that first i thought these guys understand the space they're using the language even this one last sentence it's a language of the space so you have to use it they use the language, so this means they know it, they, they learned it. Then they are using profile pictures which are belonging to the space. There is nothing worse than if somebody is telling to you to buy the NFTs, but he never bought the NFTs by himself. So these guys know, they have, look at the profile picture of those guys, you will understand it immediately. And they are using authentic Web3 uh, activities and they are providing authentic Web3 uh, activities, let's say, for the communities, which means for me, they understand and they know what has to be used. Like, for example, community on the Twitter. They are not following the strategy, sell, 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 sell. I didn't feel like that. 
uh, they are following the strategy to create community, to share the values and to create memories. And this is something which is totally different than channel to sell. Uh, and then such a big brand is asking me about my opinion. <laughs> nice. I feel very special about that. Very important point. I am able to contact these guys personally anytime. And this is something which is not that common because usually you have some kind of bots which are answering on your on your chats and your mails. So that's why it's a big value behind that. I feel that I am part of something bigger and I feel that I can help with my knowledge and my, ex my experience to this team and to Wrangler to create something bigger, to create community. I, I think I can do that. Uh, Everything else, like utilities and products, are nice to have, but I don't see that big priority in that because every retailer has for sure great products and every retailer can define a great uh, utilities. This is not the differentiation point as I see it, maybe the smallest one. So I had to say at that time point, I love this approach. And I had to say at that time that I think I am on the way to become an ambassador, ambassador 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 <laughs> sorry uh at that time point so i was not yet sure if i am ambassador or not so it was like that i liked i liked that and it was already perfect but you know there was a missing something then i started to learn more about Wrangla because sean was publishing uh, information about the brand it was fantastic to read all those information all those stories i could relate with all of them because I played as a child, cowboys, <laughs> you know, and I love this kind of spirit and so on. And it was already very, very nice. I start learning about the philosophy of the brand and this is really good. But it is also good, but not that moment as I thought, okay, you are ambassador. This moment happened after that. And this moment was this one. My wife is called Melanie. And I uh, caught myself analyzing the products of Wrangler, female products of Wrangler, checking the trousers which they have, jeans which they had, and talking to my wife like that. Look, Melanie, how great those jeans are. Isn't that your taste? I was trying to sell Wrangler's jeans to my wife. Can you <laughs> imagine that? It was not my idea. I didn't want to do that. It was just, you know, just like that. It happened. And then I realized, hey, you are probably ambassador. And what I am doing now, guys, I am selling to you. And there are around 20 people in this webinar, maybe even more. I am selling to you Vrengla. They are not paying me to do that. Not at all, nothing. I am doing that because I want to do that. And this is the strategy which is making the highest level of customer loyalty. Because if I am able to bring five more customers to Vrengla, then the Vrengla had a good strategy. This is the big difference. Coming back to our main topic, and the main topic are NFTs. All this story that I just told you about NFTs from Wrangler, Mr. Wrangler uh, uh, collection, all that was only possible because there is a technology called NFTs. So let's make a small summary. Why are NFTs so powerful? So I think the first point is the identification technology. The second point is possibility to identify with NFT itself. This is already creating totally different scope of thinking. You can never, you can never integrate, uh, identify yourself with a customer card like this, never. And this is totally different approach. Uh, it's uh, natively uh, included the work with social networks, with community platforms, uh, and this tribe feeling, you know, if I meet somebody who has a mutant ape on the airport in uh, Honolulu, I would be able immediately to talk to this guy and we will immediately have a very interesting connection. So this is the feeling that nobody can give you unless you are sharing something like this community and tribe feeling, let's call it like that. Engagement is created by the nature. It's part of the uh, uh, space at the end. The philosophy which is behind is great for the retailers because the people today want that. They want ecology, they want uh, autonomy, they want democracy, they want decentralization. And this is based, these are the basics of the blockchain technology, all of that. Perfect, especially for the young people. And it's running hype. 
best moment to make money for the retailer are running hypes. Okay, all together, the only technology and concept that provide all that tools needed to create the highest level of customer loyalty are NFTs. But I don't want to finish the presentation like that. <laughs> don't think that this is end. I have two more things that I want to tell you. First, let's go a little bit more globally. What's happening in the world in the moment? Governments are changing heavily. They are implementing lots of new digital assets laws or something like that. They are definitely going into the direction to regulate the sales of uh, digital goods. And this is why my company is doing so many things related to that. Because, of course, if they're regulating uh, uh, sales in the metaverse, they will need my help. They will need my software. So it's great to be already there. On the right side of the slide, you see the publication done by the Dubai government. It was done two days ago, three days ago, so it's a very new one. Just for you to see what is the approach of some governments. They want to create 40,000 jobs in the metaverse environment. These guys are not crazy. They know exactly what they're doing. I can tell you, I lived in Dubai for six years, so I know what I'm talking about. They are smart businessmen, and if they do something, it makes sense. So if these governments are doing something like that, it will happen. Something is happening. Something is going on. On the other side, if we this for the retailer, it's always very important. What are the post providers, means point of sale providers doing? Because if the point of sale providers are able to support the new technologies, retailers are able to implement them. And I will just show you in a couple of seconds uh, what is, for example, or what are some of them doing. But... At the end, you should know that they are preparing their solution and some of them are already ready to sell the NFTs and to identify NFTs on the POS, on the point of sale itself. One of the famous uh, post software providers is, of course, Shopify, and they are already ready with that. I will show you what they are doing in a second. But the third point, which I think is very important for the, for the future of everything, is token gating. Uh, what does it mean? It means actually to recognize NFT on the POS, for example, or wherever, wherever else, and then to do something based on that information that you have the customer who is owning something. Why is that so important? Because suddenly the retailers can take the customers from other retailers. Imagine that I'm the retailer who is issuing 10,000 NFTs, and those NFTs, owners of those NFTs, can enjoy some kind of benefits from my retail infrastructure, from my stores. But another store, another retailer, can implement token gating to recognize the same NFTs because they are publicly available on the blockchain and can give some special benefits to the same customers. <laughs> you understand? So I can immediately enjoy the customer loyalty investments, let's say, from the other retailers. Perfect. So that's why I, I'm totally sure that this kind of, of uh, implementations and for that, you need token gating. They will come for sure, because this will, this will create, again, new concepts of the customer loyalty, because I will be able to enjoy the customers which have a netto card or other card, even the card is not belonging to me. Let me just show you in a, in a very short videos, maybe some of you already knows that, what is Shopify doing in the moment? Let me check how to start this, this presentation. There are just a couple of seconds. But it's interesting to see their strategy and how far is actually post software provider. Because as a retailer, you cannot go uh, more far <laughs> than your solution provider. Let me show you that. When you look at this, or this, or this, what do you see? Do you see a fad, a scam, a useless JPEG, or do you see something more? Do you see a key unlocking the storefront of the future? Do you see a collision of art, entrepreneurship, and innovation? Do you see the new glue bridging creative communities together? We see supercharged entrepreneurs exploring the wild west that is Web3. We see tokens granting holders exclusive access to limited edition drops and experiences. Digital sticks of dynamite exploding the definition of art, fashion, media, and the marketplace. This is the new frontier of fandom, commerce, and culture. Don't blink or you'll miss it.
Okay, and now let's combine this with the second video of them, and then you will have the complete story what is actually POS software provider doing and what could be interesting for you as a reader. Invite your community into a world that recognizes and rewards loyalty. Token holders connect a crypto wallet to unlock exclusive shopping experiences. From early access to drops and limited collections to one-of-a-kind experiences and other surprises. Start token gating on your Shopify store and unlock the power of your brand's community. That's it. So very interesting means token gating, the next big thing, but not only to enjoy the, 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 the community, let's say, that you create as a retailer for yourself, but you can enjoy on the same way the communities which are created by somebody else. For example, Yuga Labs or Goblins or whatever collections, you can give to those, to those owners of the NFTs some special benefits and by that attract the new customers. At the end, and I have just two slides more, just to tell you at the end that the NFT projects are not that easy because now you maybe can win the feeling that everything is very easy, just implement NFT and you have a customer loyalty, which is the highest level. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. The technology is very new. There are huge risks related to that. And mostly there are not enough people in the space which have the knowledge. You will struggle with finding the people which are competent enough to implement and to run the projects. Education is lacking. Definitely, there are not enough uh, educated customers and the resources which can help you. Uh, there are not that many users as retailer needs. You need, you need much more than we are having today in the Web3 space. There are many missing automations. So lots of things are done manually and not optimized from the process point of view. So there is a uh, lots of things that we have to work on. NFT space is working differently. And this was the biggest part for me to understand it. The values are different that, than we have it in Web2. I will give you an example in a second. The tools are different. The ways how we communicate is different. And you have to learn that first because otherwise no chance to be successful. And at the end, the expectations are very, very high. You cannot satisfy the customers anymore with five points which you collect if you buy I don't know, something for 100 euro. You can't because if you get the uh, uh, airdrops like Yuga Labs done did uh, with, I don't know how many of, of <laughs> millions of euros, people are expecting very high valuable rewards. And that's why it's very, could be very expensive. Uh, at the end, let me give you a small point about understanding issue of the space. It's a joke actually, but I think it's good to understand what is different. I am the Web2 company, we are Web2 company, and we are employing the people, uh, I don't know, a lot. And if I'm running the interviews, I usually need more than 10 hours to analyze all the candidates, to run interviews, and I'm trying to analyze the skills, okay? This is what the Web2 company uh, sentence is telling you. Web2 company, almost 10 hours of interviews and still don't know if hired. This is showing what are the actually companies like we are doing if we are uh, trying to employ somebody in the Web2 space. And now try to read and understand the sentence after that. Web3 means the company which is in Web3. Hey, Anon, Animal PFP, you are hired. Do you understand it? If you are not in the Web3 space, you will not understand it. This is the first point. And the second point, you, even if you understand the words, you will not understand the meaning. And this is the point which is totally changing. Actually, the second sentence is to understand like this. Hey, I don't care that I don't know you. I don't care that, uh, that I don't know your identity, who you are, that you are not doxxed. I don't care about that. But you have a nice animal a profile picture, which is probably very expensive NFT, like maybe mutant ape or whatever, you are hired. So this means I don't care about the skills. I don't care about you just you are just proving that you have an NFT and you are employed. This is not good. And this will make problems for sure in the in the future because you need skills for the projects. But this is showing a little bit like a joke how the space is breathing. There are different understanding of the space. If you as a retailer don't understand that, 
it will be very difficult even on the second on the second level like all those retailers are running today so that's why i have a little bit to 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 to, to uh, let's say to tell you like uh, like uh, advice if you want to start your project start with education uh, any kind of educational projects could be great could be good for you learn first uh, make your hands dirty by trying and by doing and implement then the right strategy for you thank you very much for your attention i hope you enjoyed it uh, if you have a question i'm there for you i would like to talk to you <laughs> Yes, no problem at all. We can talk about that. Sure. <laughs> Thank I'm you. asking to Richard. Excellent. Richard, we can do that. Yes, sure. No problem, Richard. Thank you, Sheen, because you were part of that. Thank you for that. That it was allowed for me to use the, the communication. I love the feedback. Super Thank you, guys. We will, we will. The, the presentation was uh, stored or recorded. Yeah. We will distribute it later to everyone. So whoever wants to enjoy it later, I'm sure you can do that. Absolutely. <laughs> so if there are no questions relating related to that, or whatever comments then i think we can close the session for today yeah guys thank you very much to all of thank you thank you for attending and thank you for being so responsive <laughs> and for it engaging was our pleasure. it was our pleasure to be with you today anna thank you very much and thank you <laughs> see you in the web3 space bye guys bye everyone bye <laughs>